inflation has to get below the unemployment rate before we're in the clear. Hmm. And so unemployment has to be higher than inflation before the, the Fed is, you know, done fighting the fight. I am Dan Cooley. I'm the content strategist here at Princeton Mortgage. I am again with our executive vice president of capital markets, Victoria DeLuce. Victoria, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me back on the Dan Show. No, yeah, no problem. Oh, great name. I'm going to stick with that. I like that. Uh, we'll have to find an acronym that makes it work. We can go both ways with it. Um, the DC Show. Yeah, the DC Show. There you go. Yeah. Um, so, all right. So starting off with the basics, the Fed made an announcement yesterday about their deci- decision surrounding interest rates. So let's just start there. What what was their decision around interest rates? So the Fed did come out with an increase of 75 basis points, which was widely anticipated. There were a ton of people that thought that it might be 100 basis points and even more people that thought maybe it should have been 100 basis points. But we got 75 and that's what we're working with now. And, and the market had already sort of factored that in. Yeah, so the market had already um, priced the 75 basis points in. After the announcement, we actually saw the market tank a little bit. And um, there was speculation on, okay, well, what, is this, what does this announcement mean for the rest of the year and next year? And I think that we saw some immediate reaction there. But from where we took morning marks to where we ended the day, uh, pretty, pretty flat and level. Um, today we've seen a ton of volatility. And Mm. I think that that's uh, a lot of people processing or a lot of traders processing how, how, what, what is going to happen throughout the rest of the year. So it leads me to my next thing, which is what I was thinking about all day yesterday. So we, you know, if, if someone's watching this and they hadn't seen the last video we met before the, the uh, announcement and then after kind of no reason to go watch the before at this point, but we, but you know, one of the things you said was, the how many basis points it's raised almost i mean it matters but it that's not what we're watching it for what we're watching it for is the press conference after and what does jay powell say and what is his tone what does his tone indicate so that's the question i'm wondering because i watched it what what did his tone indicate miss deluce so Jerome Powell came out and basically reiterated what he's been saying this whole time, which is we will do whatever it takes to fight inflation. And we don't think that we're out of the woods yet. And they anticipate that they're going to need to do another 125 basis points worth of rate hikes throughout the rest of the year. We have two meetings left, one in November, one um, in early November and one in mid-December. That's going to be November 2nd is the announcement and December 14th. And we anticipate that we're going to see another 75 basis points in November and another 50 basis points in December for a total of an additional 125 basis point rate hike. Um, One of the other things that he said in his comments was that he believes that there needs to be a correction in housing. And Mm. so when he says something like that, that just indicates to our industry that there is not going to be any golden parachute for us. Um, it, we are going to go through, um, a correction or an adjustment in our industry. And, um, that's what he believes is needed. What do you believe that looks like? So what does that, so, so someone hearing that, Hey, we need a housing market reset. What do you think that means? And obviously this is your opinion. It's all speculation, but if you had to look into your crystal ball, what do the next couple months look like? You know, I think before the pandemic hit, there were a lot of companies debating, you know, do do we want to sell? Is this for us? Is a merger the right decision? And then loans started falling out of the sky and they decided to keep with it and make the money and do what they needed to do. Mm. And uh, I think that we're seeing a lot of companies right now that are back in that same boat that they were before the pandemic hit and refinances started to fall out of the sky. Um, I think that we are going to see a lot of merger and acquisitions. I do think that um, we're going to see some folks go out of business. Um, and it's it's sad and nobody wants to, to think about it, but it's, it is the reality. And, um, you know, this, this, this isn't just our industry. Multiple mm-hmm. industries go through cor- corrections. It's just it's near and dear to us and it's painful and it hurts, but it's what's needed. Um, you know, the other thing that you have to look at is 
how many people left other industries to join the mortgage industry during the pandemic to, you know, become processors or closers or, you know, other types of roles or loan officers. Mm. And now that the volume isn't there anymore, it, we've seen, um, we've seen a, a pretty, I don't want to say a max ex- exodus. We've seen several layoffs um, throughout the industry. I mean, when you're down 50, 70, 80 mm. percent in volume, it, you don't have the, the business, you don't need the bodies. But luckily, we are still, and that's one of the things that Jerome Powell spoke about yesterday, is that we still have a super tight labor market. So those jobs that a lot of folks left in other industries are still there waiting for them. Over the last three months, we've added 378,000 jobs on average. So we are still adding jobs to the economy. And so what Jerome Powell is saying is that, hey, we need to we need to either start adding less jobs or people start need to start losing their jobs for us to be able to um, get in line. Um, I can't remember if it was Larry Summers, but I believe it was Larry Summers said that inflation has to get below the unemployment rate before we're in the clear. Hmm. And so unemployment has to be higher than inflation before the the Fed is, you know, done fighting their fight. It's such an interesting thing. And and maybe this will make the cut or maybe it won't, you know, this is more just, just full conversation at this point. Like the, the, Everyone is always talking about keeping unemployment down. Like, how low can you get it? But it sounds to me that it actually, like, hurts the economy if too many people have jobs. Is, am I, like, hearing that incorrectly? It's not even that it necessarily hurts the economy, but think about it this way. If, if everybody is employed and we are seeing wage growth, then that means that they have money to put in the economy. Hmm. And hmm. we want people to stop putting money in the economy right now to slow it down. <laughs> Because we're kind of, from an inflation standpoint, everyone's raising their prices. We're kind of spiraling out of control. That makes sense. Absolutely. People have not stopped spending. It's such an interesting balancing act. It's such an interesting balancing act. Well, listen, I'm sure that we will meet again. Oh, good. No, I was just going to say, I find it so interesting because it's like, you, you have these very main street issues and it seems so complicated when Jerome Powell is standing up there talking about them and, you know, the CPI number and the non-farm pay, payroll number and all of these different like economic indicators. But at the end of the day, it's really just people having jobs and spending money and living their life the way they typically do. And what does that mean? And, you know, that's that's it. Mm. It's it's not that complicated. <laughs> That's what has always actually fascinated me about economics specifically is that it's not so much about there's the side of it that is completely mathematical, right? And it's about the the money side of it or the the math side of it. But then there's a part of it that's really like story based, like almost narrative based. Like what do people believe is happening? What are they, what are they doing with that belief? Like if people believe like, oh, money's everywhere. I can, I can spend like nuts. It doesn't matter. Then that has an effect. Right. And it's to, if people believe, uh, you know, a couple hundred years ago that tulips are worth, uh, hundreds of dollars, uh, a tulip and are willing to spend that, then you have this balloon that, that goes up. And so it's just, it's such a fascinating, it's such a fascinating thing. I think it's, I think it's really important that people try to learn from the main street, main street perspective, meaning mm. that like you understand consumer and borrower or consumer and borrower in our world behavior and, mm. and what do real humans do to live their life. And then you start backing into the economic side of it. I find mm. oftentimes people start looking at these like, you know, the non-farm payroll number came out and what did this do to the market? And what does this do to our interest rates? If you back it up to the level of just normal human beings and how they're living their life, I feel like that's where the, the story gets told. And then you can see it end up in the numbers. Mm. Very well said. I think that's a great place to end it. Well, you and I will meet uh, sometime in late October to discuss, uh, you know, our, our good buddy, Jay, good buddy, uh, Jerome. And um, and then we will see. We will see what happens. But I really appreciate your insight. And, uh, you know, Victoria Deleuze, you can find her on LinkedIn. I highly recommend following her. 
Um, and, uh, you know, you can, of course, find her here at Princeton Mortgage. And thank you, Victoria. Thanks, Dan.